We'll begin reading at verse number five. Uh huh. Thou should not be as hypocrites are. Mm -hmm. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Mm -hmm. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the, thy, thy door, pray to thy father which is in, in secret, and thy father which, is, which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Here, Jesus was given instructions on the model to pray, how to pray. Prayer was going to be an essential part of the believer's experience. So here, he was giving instructions on how to pray, kind of an outline, not a word for word. In fact, you won't read nowhere in scripture, anywhere in scripture where they actually prayed this exact prayer word for word. But you'll see the outline provided. Many of the theologians of yesterday said the composition here is unequal for comprehensiveness and for its beauty. In all the literature of the world, the Lord's Prayer, as it's called, is some of the most recognized and respected pieces of literature, even among those that do not claim to be believers. The prayer offered a model for its design. Now, the thing we must understand is, yes, he's providing instruction. He speaks about don't pray as the hypocrites. In other words, don't let the focus or your motive to be seen of men so that men will see you praying and then think that you're very spiritual or say, wow, look at that spiritual person, how they pray, how they do this, that, or the other. He says there's Pharisees and there's scribes and there's other people who pray like that. They have their reward. What's that? That people see them for what they are or what they think they should be, but they're not making no real connection with heaven. So don't pray. Don't try to be like somebody else. We've heard it said by some that uh, I, I, I wanted to pray, but I didn't feel I could pray like so-and-so, or I couldn't pray like so-and-so. Well, the thing God is teaching is you don't have to pray like anybody else. It's not the words that you say and how you put it together and how you look and uh, 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 how long your prayer is and how many uh, 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 syllables are in the words that you use. All those things are not important. But here he said, enter into your closet. In other words, be real sincere about it. Be genuine about it. Connect with me on a real way. Prayer is communicating with God. One time an individual was saying, how do I pray? Teach me to pray. They just become a believer. And the individual was telling them, you want to learn how to pray? Take a chair. Put it out in front. And imagine God sitting in that chair. And if you were to walk up and to have a conversation with him, how would you connect? What would you say? Just a conversation with God. That's how you pray. Just be real, genuine. Sometimes you can get caught up in vain repetition. You can get caught up with this and that because you're trying to sound a certain way. But here he said, I'm not worried about that. You had pagan gods and you had this God and that God. They would point to the east so many times a day and they would do their bodies in this contrition and that contrition. They would do these and they would point crosses all over and they would do all these things, this, that, and the other. He said, I don't need all of that. Just be real. Just be sincere and talk to me. Well, here in this prayer, we're going to pull our title of this morning's sermon from the first two words that he mentioned. He said, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father. That's what we want to preach on this morning. Our Father. Amen. Now, we know 
that it's Father's Day and we want to celebrate and acknowledge the fathers in a tremendous way. But this morning we want to do something just a little bit different. We want to honor the fathers, but we want to honor the father of all fathers. Amen. Amen. There's something called commercialization. You hear anytime they make something, humanity gets in and they move the focus off what it should be on and put it on something else. All right. Amen. You know, Christmas. Now they got XMAS. They got it. It's the number one retail day in America and all this other stuff. But they forget about Christ. All right. So here we want to talk about fathers and we're going to break down fathers from a practical sense. We're going to speak to you, uh, the great fathers that we have. But we're also going to look more important at God. You say, Brother Lee, why? Because we want to bring glory to God this morning. We want to bring. I read somewhere in my Bible that he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto you. So here unto me. So here, what I'm hoping that we can do is so lift up God this morning that it encourages fathers and provides them a model because some people have never seen a real good father. We're going to show you one this morning. And we are also hoping, amen, that we inspire the faith of those, amen, that have made the decision to live for God. Amen. When you see what a father does and how a father takes care of and who your father is, we pray, amen, your faith is inspired this morning, amen, on the greatness of God. Also, we're hoping that we can inspire somebody to make a move for God. Amen. How could you not want a a father like him? How could you want to run from a God, a father like that? We're hoping that you see all these this morning. So here, just a little history. I'm sorry. He said, our father. Well, we'll come to that. Just a little history. Father's Day was founded in Spokane, Washington at the YMCA in 1910 by Sonora Smart Dodd. She was from Arkansas. And she had actually been inspired by Anna Jarvis. Anna was the one that wanted to recognize her mother. And she initiated Mother's Day. She began in 1908 honoring Mother's Day, a day set aside that we reflect on the outstanding contributions that mothers make to all of our lives. It was 1911 before it began to be celebrated in every state. By 1914, President Woodrow Wilson signed it as a national holiday to be recognized nationally. Mother's Day. But let me show you how fathers are sometimes overlooked. In 1910, now I'm not arguing who's more important. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> I know what lane to stay in. <laughs> I know what the child, who the child came out of. I know who carried the child for nine. Don't get me started. I know. I know all about it, but we want to put some respect on fathers this morning because they're important as well. But in 1910, they started, Sister Dodd started the recognition of fathers, but it took six years for Mother's Day to be initiated in a Methodist church in Spokane, Washington, to have been acknowledged by the President of the United States of America, nationally recognized, six years. 1910, Sister Dodd, I'm sorry, Sister Jarvis started Mother's Day, Sister Dodd began to acknowledge fathers. It took 1972 by a president by the name of Richard Nixon to acknowledge and recognize Father's Day. Six years, Mother's Day 
62 years. I believe. Not that individuals don't care about fathers, but I believe that many times people underestimate the importance of a father. Sometimes he may not be everything that we think he ought to be, but I'm going to show you this morning the importance of a father. Many times a father may not say all the words that need to be said, but many times him just showing up is enough. The mother may know what to say and how to say it and get this together and that together, but sometimes that child will just look over and just see daddy's here, and the dad don't know the words to say. He doesn't know how to say it. He doesn't know what to wear in every occasion. He does not know how to pronounce the words. Sometimes he's not as connected to his emotions as he should be, so he doesn't know when to cry and when to laugh like he should be. He doesn't know what songs to sing for what occasions, but Sometimes just daddy showing up makes a huge difference. He might not have been there every day. He may not have done everything he should do. Matter of fact, he might be involved in some stuff he shouldn't be involved in. But I'm telling you, just daddy showing up many times makes all the difference in the world. I was telling a young lady she was going to do something in a relationship. They were not married. I'm sorry, in this case, they were married. It was multiple cases, but some they weren't married. So, uh, this one, they were married. And the father did something he shouldn't do. And so the marriage was on the brinks. And they were saying that uh, we can't work this out. It's no good, Brother Lee. You understand what he did. You have no, I found this out, and I found this out, and I know about this date and this. And I can't believe he bought this home. And I can't, oh, I can't say the other. I said, I sat there, and I listened to it. One thing, if you're going to be a counselor, you have to be, and that is a good listener. Just listen. Sometimes people just want to be heard. Sometimes you got to hear them all the way through and just allow them just to just to pour out. They need someone just to pour out. So you just sit there. And I just sat there. They're going. Many times people are so emotional on a the point, they'll repeat themselves over and over. But you still just sit there and let them just keep on going and keep on going and just stay focused and listen to them. Well, we got to the end and I said, I understand all of that. And I'm not disputing, was he a bad man and he shouldn't have done what he did. But I'm going to tell you one thing, and I pray you take this counsel. However you feel about him, whatever you want to do about him, however bad he is and what you think and this, that, and the other, and all of it could be valid and there could be validity to every single charge. But I'm going to give you some counsel. Whenever it comes to those children, you separate the way you feel towards that man. You don't dog that man out in front of the children. You don't tell those children your daddy ain't no good. He's a scum. He's a cheat he's a liar he ain't no he ain't about nothing you get enough maturity down in you and you say you know what children this that or the other that's between you and your dad but my god why because it'll come back at you it's something in a child that loves their dad it don't matter what he is what he does what he don't do it's god put in us our father is the closest thing that we have uh, uh, towards god that's why here he said when you pray don't pray god the celestial being of the no 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 pray our father our father pray and that's the same name he gives the same title the same responsibility he gives that child's father father there's something in that child that wants the approval of his father there's something that father may have not been here this birthday that birthday he may have had too much to drink and everything else but i'm gonna tell you that father is something deep in that child so make sure you're mature enough to respect that a man's greatest accomplishment is his family. It doesn't matter what he ends up accomplishing. His family. The highest, highest title a man can have is father. It is the title God gave himself. He said, when you pray, you pray, our father. I encourage everyone, especially those that came out today, to commend fathers when you see them. It's a tough job being a father. One time an individual say, why is my father not coming around, this, that, and the other, so on and so forth? Does he not care about me? Does he not know this? Does he not? What did I do? I don't care how he feels about my mother. Why doesn't? I'm going to tell you, sometimes the responsibility of fatherhood is of such that when 
a person gets behind, they view it almost like being in debt. There are some people that are so far in debt with some credit cards that they don't even pay them no more. You say, man, those are some worldly people. No, they may be around in this. <laughs> some folks so far behind on their school loans, they don't even pay them no more. Some folks so far behind on their mortgage, they just say, you know what? It is what it is. It is what it is. Well, sometimes it's the same thing with a father. He may go through something, misnegotiate the relationship with the father, with the, uh, with the mother, and he gets behind. So now to deal with that, he struggles. So it's kind of just like, it, it is what it is. I feel bad about it, but I just kind of got to put it out my, I'm just so far behind. But I'm here to tell father, I don't care how far behind you are. I don't care how much in debt you may feel to be. Pick that phone up. Pick that start somewhere. Just, just, just apologize. Just be, a, be a real man. Say, I'm sorry. You know what? I wasn't there. I'm so, don't just keep it going. It's only going to get worse if you just keep going. I wasn't there when I should have been, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to start from the day. I'm going to start from the day. And don't overpromise. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Don't promise nothing you ain't going to deliver. Don't say I'm going to be there for your birthday and then you don't show up. Don't you know that child from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to bed at nighttime. They, they may get a bike. They may get a Nintendo. They may get a Xbox. They may get a, 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 all other boxes. But if that father said I'm coming, they will wait right there by the door. Daddy said he's coming. And the mom is in a tough situation because she know him. She know what he's about. And that's why you got to put some respect on mothers because some mothers got to do double duty. They got to be a mother and a father. They got to more than make up. And let me put a little bit further on this. Sometimes you also got to put a, a, a double respect on what I'm seeing today because a lot of grandmothers now are filling the roles of fathers. Watch. A lot of grandmothers now are for the mothers worn out, got to deal with this and that and the other. But the grandmothers now are stepping up many times and playing the role of a father. So put some respect on grandmothers as well. And grandfathers. Amen. So a man's greatest gift is his children. The greatest gift a man can give his children is to love, respect, and honor their mother. Let me say that again. Those that are married, even if you're not, one of the greatest gifts you can give a child is to love, take care of, honor their mother. Now, the great, one of the great gifts a man can have been blessed with it's to have been raised or exposed to a good and godly father. That's called the blueprint. One of the greatest things you could have been blessed with is to have been exposed. You say, Brother Lee, what if I were exposed to a father? He had some good qualities, but he also had some qualities that weren't that good. Well, then you got to learn how to pick and choose. I was getting marriage counsel, and I got counsel from a gentleman who had been married like five or six times. He said, Lee, why in the world are you getting counsel from me? I've been married like five or six times, man. You don't want to listen to me. I said, yes, I do. Tell me everything you did. So I know exactly what not to do. He didn't come home, went with his friends, didn't do this, didn't do that. Exactly. So I'm going to go right home after work. I'm going to put my friends in the distance. My wife is first. Tell me what else you did. Kept, I stayed friends with my exes and my ex ex exes and stayed on the phone with them, this, that, and the other. Okay, amen, cut off all exes. Amen, what else? Keep going. Well, sometimes you got to look at a father and say, you know what? These were the great things he did. i never forget. I was coming from a, a mission trip up with uh, some of the Amish Mennonite community in central Michigan, and I came home. I was there from early Friday, whatever it was, came home late uh, afternoon on Saturday. And I'm telling my father, I'm like, yeah, listen, I'm going to go. And we had Saturday evening services. I said, I'm going to go drop the children off, drop my wife off, and I'm heading over to uh, Saturday evening service. I'm right there. Let's break open the word. He said, no, you're not. He said, no, you're not. He said, spend time with your family. You guys coming from a mission trip, this, that, and the other, help your wife unwind. 
connect with her, take them to the park. And I'm sitting there like this, hold on, not but spiritual. Not, not the closest thing I know to Warner. <laughs> you saying don't go. He said, son, listen to me, I've learned some things. He said, I've learned some things. He said, you know what? Most of the uh, getaways and this, that, and the other that we did, he said, uh, these were some lessons learned. I would piggyback them on revivals. So I would stop at this on our way to the revival. Or I would come back and we would stop here for a moment and then we go. He said, prioritize your family to the point in which what you're doing is just family. Don't mix it. Sometimes out of experience, you got to mix it. But sometimes don't mix it. Just connect with them. Let them see that they're a priority. Let your children see. Uh, many times ministers, because they're so given to their ministry, they make their children feel like they're like 10th fiddle. It's the church, 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 the church. And then y'all get back somewhere in a corner somewhere. But as he began to get older in life, he said the church is very important. But don't you ever underestimate your children. Don't you ever underestimate your family. Teaching lessons that he learned along the way. I'm not saying he did everything perfect, but guess what? He was humble enough to show the things that he did well and the things he didn't do as well, well. and to give me guidance. So here, learn from your father one way or another. All right? So here, we talked about 62 years to honor fathers, and we're going to get into the five qualities of a father just in a little bit of time that we have. But before we do, I'm going to show you how important it is for the father's role in the child's life and in the family's life. They said the number one determinant, determining factor regarding, this was a research project, regarding prison, the prison population, was not race, was not poverty, but it was either fatherlessness or a father that was a bad influence. It said that meant more in this particular study. When the father was gone, that role, that child coming to manhood, trying to figure it out. This girl, dad, she said she liked me. What do I do? What, what, had no father there to tell him, keep it in the friend zone, son. You're good. You're good. You don't need to be validated because you took advantage of a girl. You're validated because of how you treat and respect a girl. I mean, a father really coaching. Fatherhood is so important. It says here in Genesis, one of the great teachers on fatherhood had made a profound point, and he said that Fatherhood is so important. Sin is a result of a man declaring his independence from a godly father. In Genesis, man, the devil said, you don't need your father. Don't listen to your father. Did you get the depth of that statement? It said sin, the whole world, sickness, sin, and disease, prison, all that is a result of a man simply declaring his independence. And the whole world began to spin out of control. Well, if you see a child whose life is spinning out of control, many times it's the result of a child declaring his independence from the counsel of a godly father saying, I can do life all by myself. I'm good. I got this. One of the things... It was a profound uh, scripture, and we'll take the time to read it. Go over to Exodus 18.20. Exodus 18.20. There was a young man who had 
experienced much success in life. And they asked him, what was the key to that success? He said that I listened to my father. I listened to my father. Many young men would circumvent many headaches if they simply listen to their father. You know what? I'm, I apologize for that. It's actually Ezekiel. I just put ES, Ezekiel 18.20. Wouldn't read it, but Frank. Well, I'll read it. It's just for time's sake. He says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the, shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So he said, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. First Kings 15, 3. So here he's teaching a principle that nobody is going to go to hell because their father rejected God. Each person will be accountable for their own decision. But Now in the 18th year, go ahead and read, Brother Frank, verse now, 1. Now in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, uh -huh. the son of Nebat, uh -huh. reigned Abijam uh -huh. over Judah. Yes. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Maka, mm -hmm. the daughter of Abishalom. Mm -hmm. And he walked in all the sins of his father, mm -hmm. which he had done before him. Stop right there. Although mankind will not be held accountable in God's eyes because of what a father did. The sins that the father decides to engage in deeply influences the child. Did you see that? the accountability, meaning that that child going to stand before God for himself. But the influence of a father. If that child has seen that father never faithful to the mother, never faithful to any woman, it's a good chance that that father, that son, is going to struggle being faithful when he comes into a relationship. If that child seen the father smoking dope on a continual basis, it's a good chance that one day that father is going to sneak up on that child and see them with a skinny cigarette in his hand. If that child seen the father use profanity and cursing people out and saying you blankety blank and even putting his hands on the mother, it's a good chance when that child gets frustrated in a relationship that that child could snatch up his woman and the woman going to say, where did you get it from? Many people call this generational curses. That's when you come to the point of age and you realize that I'm not going out like this. My father's father may have influenced my father, but I'm not going to hand this down to my son. I'm not going out like this. Whatever I got to do, if I got to uh, 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 stop drinking, stop smoking, if I got to quit putting my hands, if I got to uh, stop sleeping around, I'm not going to allow these generational spirits, influences. So in other words, fathers, I would just be very careful. How you operate in front of your child, you have no idea the depth of your influence. You, the child could live with the mother, go spend a few weeks in the summer with the father, and come back home acting more like the father than he did like the mother who he was with. All the year. There's a responsibility. One young man came and had a, a child expecting. He came and he said, I got to get saved. He said, there's no way that I could bring a child into this world. And be a father that is not godly. The, I understand the responsibility of this. Anybody that's not saved this morning as a father, you should have enough humility to say, I you got. know what? I've done me long enough. It's not about me no more. The best thing I could ever do for my children is to give my life to God. Ask God to deliver me if there's any habits, if there's any spirits. Lord, deliver me. You'll be shocked how many times your children got to wink at this and wink at that. Not look at this and not look at that. Look over here when you do this. Look over. They're tired of that. They should be able to walk in on that. 
daddy praying. They should be able to walk in on daddy reading the Bible. They should be able to walk in and hear daddy crying his name out. Each child, Lord, bless my child here. Bless them here. Lord, work this out. They should be able to say, like, uh, they should be able to have a father that can say, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Amen. So here we know that the child does not give an account to God for what the parent did, what the father did, but the father does. It said he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done. What, Brother Frank? And he walked in all the sins of his father. Come on. We had, which he had done before him. Which he had done before him. So Lord help us. All right. So here we see that God, when he said teach him to pray, he said our father. He did not say, like we had mentioned before, our king of kings or our majestic God of the universe, the celestial being from the most high that dwells between Mount Ethereal and Mount Urium. He simply said, our father. And I'm going to show you the gravity, the gravity of that. There are five characteristics of a father. We'll cut, touch some in this service and some in the next. But the first characteristic of a father and many young men will say, Brother Lee, I'm thinking about courtship and I'm thinking about getting married or I have a young child. I want to know, how do I be a father? My father wasn't there. Or my father wasn't the best example. Can you help me? I want to be a good father. Well, we're going to look at these five principles before we let you go and it will help any young man that ever plans on becoming a father you got a model you got a heavenly father we can look into God's work even though our earthly fathers might not have been there might not have been the best models but we have a heavenly father that is a tremendous model and we're going to look real briefly at these five characteristics all right go over to uh psalms I'm sorry first corinthians 10 13 the first one is a good father is a protector. Go over to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. These five characteristics that a good father has, we want to be inspired when we find out and we understand how great of a father God is, but we also want to mimic him and to hold him up as an example for more young men to follow. Dr. Juwanza Kanjufu is a researcher for educational disparities, and he said that is one of the great determinants is the father's role he said the father's role is so so important and I believe saints the devil knew this just bear, bear with me for a moment we're gonna let you go pretty soon but those that's tuning in I believe that the devil knew how important a father's role is that's why he's attacked fathers in society that's why he's basically said I, I if I can remove the father if I can remove them out the equation, it's almost like in order to come into my house, you got to come by me. <laughs> you you, 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 you got to come by me. The, the mother's role is a nurturer, is to provide the home of a sense of calm and peace and to take this, that, and the other. But a father innately is, is a protector. That's the way God designed it, and that's the way uh, even a, a child could hurt her themselves and they can say mama mama I need you but a dog chasing daddy where the dog at where's it at hold on we'll, 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 we'll pick up something it's, it's, it's innately it's a protector that's why even some men don't let, pray for me this morning some young men if they see a strong father they will go right past that young lady's house I ain't messing with her you see that man up every day walking her to the bus stop you see that man up every day all walking, asking, how you doing? Good to see you. If you go to that man's house, he, he interviewing like you're interviewing for a job. You're interviewing for more than a job. You try to come here to get my daughter. Where you from? Who's your parents? Who's your grandparents? What did they do? Where you work at? What's your credit score? What's your FICA? Hold on. I play no games with you. Please, no, no, no. But they'll try to run around something that they think I can get too easily. I can get to it. Mother's taking care of her, but they can mess around and, 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 and 
get a, and get a, a, a side uppercut because sometimes a mother realizes that guess what? The father is not there. I can't just be the super uh, food maker, get him George, spoil him, this, that, and the other. I have to ask God to give me a double portion like Elijah to Elijah. I can't be a super mom because daddy, that's why many times individuals mess up. If the father's not there, the mother tries to provide by being a super mom. So now Jordans and you want this in your birthday party, you get 10 cakes and you get this, that, and the other. No, no, no. A super mom will spoil a child. A child only needs enough mom, not a super mom. What a child needs is a mother that says the father is not there like my roommates at Central Michigan. Amen. My, my mother, uh, I'm still going to be mother. I'm still going to nurture you. I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to put a bandaid on you. But guess what? I'm going to be part father. Where you going? You're not bringing that in my house. I bought you in this world. I will take you out. You ain't going to step over me. You're not going to just do what you want to do. You're not going to just talk to me any old type of way. I will take my heels off. I will you know you not yes I'm your mother but I'm your daddy too so many times and why I said that I had a partner of mine whose mother played both she understood it every one of those young african-american men in the middle of Ypsilanti Michigan Belleville end up with advanced degrees because the mother said this guess what I'm not going to just be that super mom coming to bring you cup, cup, cup. No, no. Where you, you in class? Where's your books at? Hold on. What's this stuff I see on the floor? This don't look like no man's garment. What's this doing in here? If this is, I, I'm sitting up here like, man, she bought the cookies and the daddy. <laughs> My goodness. What in the world is going up, up here? And guess what? They all graduated. Hey, Amen. I'll call your coach. He won't play. I'll tell him I will come to the game. I'll walk out on the field. I will be I will talk. Well, I'll walk on the 50 yard line and tell him, don't you let him. Why? Because he ain't listening to his mama. He shouldn't be in the game. Put him, put him on the bench. I'll embarrass you in front of all your friends. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. I didn't bring you to all those after school this and after school that. Watch you for this and watch you for that to have you come up here and mess everything up. Many times when a mother's not, father's not there, that mother, hold on, who is it, who you with? I ain't just, see, the mother would bring the boys all the cupcakes outside, all your friends come over, your mother, hey, you want cupcakes? That's good, bring the cupcakes, but put them down for a minute, do a sniff test. Wait, whoa, whoa, bro, I thought you ain't had no dad. Man, my mom, man. What's going on here? Where y'all at? Hold on, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? I'm sniffing. I'm seeing what I'm smelling. Do I, sm do I smell something? Do I oh. Y'all used to be, last summer, y'all was 12, y'all was musty. Now y'all putting this spray stuff on top of y'all, still musty, on top of y'all must. <laughs> oh, so some girl then gave you some, oh, so now you think you, okay, okay. Listen to me, let me find you messing with one of these young ladies. I will go to their house. Let me find something, post it. Let me find something. That ain't, I, I will go to their house. My God. I, I ain't playing no games with you. I ain't going to let you ruin yourself. Well, mama, why are you trying to be? No, 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 no. I have to be a protector. You don't understand my role. Go ahead and read, Brother Frank. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There have no temptation taken you. Yes. But such as is common to man. Yes. But God is faithful. My Lord. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Yes. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape? My mind, listen to this protector, our Heavenly Father. You got to understand who God is. He's saying, you done gave your life to me. The Apostle Paul is letting them know the church of Corinth. He said, listen, be encouraged. God is your Heavenly Father. He is such a protector. There is nothing that can get to you that first it got to get by him. There is no temptation taking you. But such as is common to man. But God is faithful and not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able to bear and will with the temptation. Make a way for you to escape so that you're able to bear. So here he's saying, God will test everything that comes your way and assess it and make sure that you have what you need to handle it. And if you don't, then he won't allow it to come your way. Amen. That's the protector that we have. It doesn't matter what the situation is. How could you not want a father like that? 
It doesn't matter what you go through. God is saying, I'm there for you. This is my child, devil. You're not just going to bring anything. You're not going to understand. He needs to be tested. I understand he must go through some things, but I'm not going to just allow anything to come. No, you say, but but Job went through. But Job, the devil had to first ask God permission. Yes, we will go through some things. But the enemy got to ask God permission. So we see that God, our heavenly father, is a protector. He said, go to Psalm 91 real quick. Psalms 91. Many times children don't understand that a father is trying to protect them, even when that father may have bumped his head his own self. Because sometimes the father understands that I don't want you to make the mistakes I made. Come on. I'm going to be honest. Sometimes some of the best fathers is those that had some blunders because now they know that side. And they're saying, son, I don't want trust me. I've been in the streets. You can't tell me nothing about the streets. I wrote the Constitution for the streets. <laughs> you can't bring nothing to me that I don't know about the streets. And trust me, son, you ain't never seen nobody retire from the streets. Great 401, 401k, 403b. That's their house. Come here. Let me show you. Going right out on Browns Lake Road, up there on the hill with that man right there. What was it? He was a lawyer. He was, he was educated. What was he? He retired from the streets. Where's that house at? Where's that neighborhood at? It's called Cooper Street. Thank you, but Tim. <laughs> Thank you, but Tim. <laughs> Thank you, but Tim. I don't yeah, go ahead. You, I'm going to take you there to show you what they did it the right way. And I'm going to show you on over here. And this is what people think. I'm going to be slicker than them. My daddy wasn't smart enough. How are you going to be? My dad said something one time. I was talking to him about something. And I said, no, nah, dad, uh, see, this is new. Uh, see, this is something. Uh, uh, I said, you, you don't know nothing about this or this happening. He sat there and he said, 1974 is now 89. 19. 1931 or 30? 31. 31. 1931. When were you alive? When I wasn't. Hmm. <laughs> then I said, Dad, no, no. You see, I got, they come into the shop now because he, he was showing me how to be a barber. I said, I got to cut their hair because this one want a high top fade. It's where you bought it way, way up and you blend the line completely out. Those that don't know how to do it, they leave a line in it because they don't know how to fade the fade out. They want the high, but they don't know how to fade the line out. So the, the best ones, is the ones that don't know how to do a high top, they got a, a high fade, they got a little lower because they need more space to blend the line completely out. But if you got real skill, you, you bought it all the way up to the top and then you blend the line out in just like a half an inch right there. Then you make it thick with the wave. That's a high, high fade. He said, hold on. Came back with a picture from the 1930s when he had a high, high, high fade. He said, ain't nothing new under the sun, man. You think it, please. So here, go ahead and read this, Brother Frank, in regards to God, our protector. Verse. Just start at verse one. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High uh -huh. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Mm -hmm. My God, in him will I trust. A fortress is like a fortified city. God is saying, you're fortified, son. I got you. I'll protect you. It's not, it's not penetrate me. Come on and read. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Come on. And from the noisome pestilence. Come on. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Come on. And under his wings shall thou trust. My Lord. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Come on. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Any things that comes your way that you don't even see. Come on and read. Nor for the arrow that flieth by the day. The things that you do see. Come on and read. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Come on, undercovered. Read. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Come on, at the height of your life. Read. A thousand shall fall by thy, right, by thy side. Come on. 
and 10,000 at thy right hand. You don't even see it. This is what he's saying. Listen, 1,000 shall fall at that right side, 10, 000, at the side, 10,000 at that right. In other words, it's stuff that's coming at night of your life, stuff that you don't even see coming your way. That's the heavenly father that we have. It's things that come against us that we don't even realize that they're not even making it to us. There's things that are all around us, enemies and spirits and various things all around you that God did not even allow to get to you. You didn't even see they were coming. Spirits that were dispatched against you to take you out. Things that were supposed to make you go crazy in your mind. But God slayed that thing. It didn't even come close to you. Here he's saying that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. You're right there up under my shadow. I'll protect you. I'll take care of you. It don't matter what you see coming your way. People say, man, your life is successful. This, that, and the other. Don't ever have no pride. There's some things that came against you that God prevented before it got to you that you don't even know. It's bodies, dead body, dead spirits lying all around you that should have took you out. But God was protecting you and not letting it get to you. So don't ever have your chest up, but just have faith in knowing that God, he that begun a good work is faithful. Now, here, Scripture said, the Lord is on my side. Psalms 118, don't go there. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. No, no, no. Let me say it like this. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. Then it's colon. What can man do unto me? Did you catch that? It didn't say, the, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. It's actually a question. It says, the Lord is on my side. Come. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Do you know who my daddy is? I'm not fearing nobody. All right. It don't matter right. what you come up with. My God. It doesn't matter how difficult the situation is. Amen. Do you know who my daddy is? My Lord. That's what people go in the community when they have a strong father. They will go down to the exchange park or rotary playground or wherever it may be. And they will let the people, I'm not scared of you. Do you know who my, my daddy God. is? My God. Amen. 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 My Lord. You said, and he said over in Isaiah 54, don't go there. It said, who shall gather against whosoever gather against he shall fall then in verse 16 it says i have created an arsenal for you he talked about the anvil and this that and the other and then he says and i know that the enemy has created weapons against you but no weapon my god formed against you shall prosper do you understand who you serve? You say, Brother Lee, how could he say something like that? Because the enemy wanted to create this and try to destroy you. That's because later on in Psalms 91, he said, don't go there. But about verse number 11, my God, he says, and I shall give, he shall give his angels my God. charge. You know what a charge mean? A charge means that, uh, 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 an assignment. He said, he shall give his angels charge over you. Do you realize the protector that God is? Saints of God, this is not just scripture. This is real. He said, I dispatch angels that have a charge. Take care of brother so-and-so. Y'all, take care of sister so-and-so. You say, Brother Lee, make it human. Make me understand it. Have you ever seen it where uh, uh, the president of the United States or, 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 or whoever the, the Democratic nominee uh, is, once he comes to the top, they'll say, guess what? He's now been displaced and he now has secret service. You say, Brother Lee, what is that? These are special agents, amen, that are given the responsibility to go with them wherever they go. If they go to the bathroom, they got to actually walk. If this is the bathroom, they got to actually walk while they're in the bathroom. Don't go in there. But before they go to the in the bathroom, go in there, walk around, check it, look all around. Then come on back out and say, OK, it's safe for you to go in there. Now, I'm going to wait right here. If anybody tries to get into the bathroom, they're not getting in there. While you sleep at home, another shift comes and they'll actually sit in a parking lot outside of your house down right there in front of you not that you got to call 911 and they got to make it to you they're sitting right there you don't need 911 when you have the secret service because they're already there when you wake up in the morning and you say i'm going for a jog they got to be in shape the next crew come in because they got to jog with you just far enough out the way so you don't really feel their presence but close enough that nothing can happen to you well god says i understand what the united states of america has done for the president but i 
I want you to know you are my child, amen. I've given my angels charge my God, over you. You God, say, do you have man. enough angels? Do you know how many angels that I got? I have angels that have been given charge. Go to the bathroom. Go before. Sit up outside the outside door. My God, when they go to a restaurant, sit there. When they're at home sleeping, make sure they wake up. Make sure they go to bed. And that's why he said, 10,000 shall fall at thy right side. What was he saying? You don't know how many spirits the devil sent to bring you back in the body back. But the angels dealt with those spirits and now they're all laying about, around about you. My God, my God. Amen. God, our protector. God, our protector. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. Go over real quickly to Philippians 4.19. The second thing a father must do, and we're going to have to fly through this, and we'll get to the rest of the points probably in the second service. But the second thing that a father does is provide. A father is a provider. First, he's a protector. And Lord, help us as fathers to protect our children. Saints, and let me just tell you this. There are many children today that are being introduced to things. Many spirits are grabbing hold and many things that they're inquiring about that they're getting through social media. It's very important. Don't think it's so cool for you to say, oh, my child is six years old. I just got them a brand new iPhone. You just introduced them. You say, but Lee, well, guess what? Uh, my child, uh, this, that, and the other, um, uh, they go to after school and they need a ride home. You better go get an Obama phone. That's basically a little flip thing to just, it, you can call and you can call. You can't go, you can't, it don't go, it ain't, it ain't smart. It's a dumb, a real dumb phone. I'm not saying Obama's dumb. I'm saying the phone that through his administration he had and got sent out. Get my point. The point is, be that protector. They gonna be upset at you. I've seen parents and I've seen my wife do it. Listen, you gonna take this iPad? Don't leave this room. Why? Because just you being in the presence of all your other siblings would just kind of offer protection that if you was in this corner, outside this room, downstairs, and you got the iPhone, you ran up under the covers, there might be some spirits that would try to grab hold of you. There might be something you listen to. No, take those headphones off. Whatever you listening to, I should be able to hear. You mean, no, I ain't mean. I'm protecting you. <laughs> Playing no games with this. And every once in a while, I'm going to go into the brains. You say, what's the brains? Every iPad, every computer, every phone. You are, it's a way that you can go into this thing and see everywhere it's been. Hold on. Where, 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 where you go? What's this right here? I don't understand this. What, 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 hold on. You'd be shocked how many people have been introduced to stuff. Uh, I'm a girl, and I kissed a girl. Whoa, whoa, what, what, what? Where you get that from? Where'd that come from? You ain't grow. You ain't. You, you weren't born like that. Go on, taking your daughter shopping. You said, "No, mom, I don't want that. I want the real tight ones. They got the string to come up right here, and I want the thing to make my behind come up. And I want the Kardashians. They always got they show their stuff, and they show them, no, 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 no. Where you get that from? No. And I want the fake this. I want the. And I want my eye. Can't miss this young lady. I, I almost jumped. There was eyelash. There was like this. It was like a, a cartoon or something. It was like, I'm like, when your eyes gonna get tired? What in the world is it? What are you trying to do? I, I don't know if you ever seen it. I'm like, man, it ain't that much dust around our house. That's the eyelashes are for. Like, what in the world is this? No, 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 no. No, why? Why? Why are you? Why? Why do you be protective of your daughter as she's getting older? Why? Because there's something called the frontal lobe. See, your back lobe develops first. Your frontal lobe of your brain that helps you with decision and reasoning. It really don't develop fully until you're like 20, 21 years old. So here you're you're impressionable. You, you, your, your reasoning skills aren't really developed yet. That's why it's 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 it, it legally, it's wrong for an older man to go and try to date a younger woman. It ain't no competition. It, 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 it's not fair. You, when you're younger, that's why in, in high school, you'll be like the guys that really struggle. They'll be the senior, the one that got the game, the senior that go with the senior that everybody like. They got game. And if it's a senior to get a college girl, he got serious game. But the one that's really struggling, he's a senior and he's running around with his little freshman. 
Girl, I like you. Girl, I can do this, that, and the other. Girl, I got your back. Girl, this, that, and the other. Why? And that's what you got to be t- protective of. Daughter, listen to me. It's not okay that you show your chest uh, creases in your chest. That's not okay. You don't want to attract the wrong attention. If you got to do that to attract a man's attention, you don't need that man. You don't know. Work on your brain. Go to school. Get your degree. Have morals. Don't show everybody. Make him earn it. Make him realize once you marry me, then you're going to see all that I'm about. I'm not exploring. Showing everybody everything I got. You got to be protective right through here. No, daughter. And I love you and I appreciate you. And we can go get some cute stuff. But too many daughters don't have a strong father there and let him know I love you. You don't need no boy telling you this. I tell you every day you walk up, you are beautiful. You are amazing. You don't need no boy coming telling you all this stuff. Your daddy tell you this. It's imperative that that father be that protector. So here, this as far as we'll get. It said the second thing that the father must do is provide. Come on, read. But my God shall supply all your need uh-huh. according to his riches my Lord. and glory. Here he said, my God, the apostle Paul said, now that you're getting your life to God, God will provide all your need. Everything you need, he'll take care of you. It doesn't matter how big the need is. Over in First Timothy, don't go there. Remember, God is a father, so he must hold himself accountable to the same standard that he put on other fathers. Thank the Lord. My Lord, my Lord. It was supposed to be a surprise, but 86-year-old brother got saved. He prayed and put a prayer request in every service for his daughter. Now he's walking down the aisle. Brother Marshall with his daughter. He didn't know she was here today. He didn't know she was coming. Amen. He didn't know she was coming. Brother Marshall with his daughter. She snuck in. He prayed. He said, saints, pray. I want my daughter in the church of God. Pray, saints. I want my daughter to come to the church of God. She sent an email to the church of God and said, don't tell him, Brother Lee. Don't tell him. I'm coming on Sunday. I told him. I said, we got a surprise for you, Brother Marshall. (laughs) God answers prayer. My Lord. My God. My God. Thank the Lord. Amen. What a a Father's Day <laughs> gift. Amen. Amen. You real say that 86 year old man is crying. It's okay to cry, Brother Marshall. Thank God. God real men cry because he got a burden for his daughter. My God. My God. Amen. Amen. He said, I'll supply all your needs. All your needs. Thank the Lord. I'll take Amen. care of you. He said, be careful for nothing. In other words, don't worry about anything <laughs> but with prayer and supplication. Make your request known to God. Amen. Thank the Lord. So God will supply. In 1 Timothy 5, he said, if a man don't provide for his own, he is worse than an infidel. So, amen. God got to hold himself responsible to that same level of standard. If God don't supply all your needs, then he's worse than an infidel. He'll take care of you amen and John 1 he said ever James 1 17 my God he speaks about meeting every need he said I will look to the hills from what's come with my help my help coming from the Lord, my Lord who made heaven and earth amen and to give you an example the children of Israel when they were coming up out of Egypt he said he gave them manna in Exodus 16 35 don't go there it said the children of Israel for 40 years He gave manna until the day they went and came into the promised land. It said until 40 years, every single day, manna was God's meal. You couldn't keep it to the next day or it was spoil. Every day, God was faithful to supply their need. Their shoes didn't wear out. Clothes didn't wear out. Every day they got manna until the word until means that he did not miss a single day. My God, amen. God faithful, was faithful for faithful. 40 years. Amen. Saints of God, be encouraged. It doesn't matter what you may deal with or what needs you may have. God understands it. If it's financial, psychological, family, amen, family restoration, it does not matter, amen, educational, whatever the need is, God is faithful. As he was faithful to the children of Israel for 40 straight years, amen, every day, did not miss a day. God is not going to mess up his record with you. Thank the Lord. David said, I've been young, but now I'm old, amen, yet I have not not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread as we close out in Matthew 15 21 don't go there amen there was a woman a Canaanite woman amen her daughter was in need of a touch I'm letting you know how powerful divine healing is when it comes to father don't go
go to God as God of the universe, God of the celestial. Go to him as father. Here, a Canaanite woman, she, she had a daughter that needed a touch from heaven. Amen. And they came in and they bought the daughter up. And the disciples said, amen, you can't come up here. Thank the Lord. Why? Because, amen, healing is, is, is not right to give the bread of the children, amen, uh, uh, to dogs. She said, I don't care if it's uh, uh, call me a dog. Give me some crumbs. Give me something. My daughter needs to be healed. Amen. So here he said healing is the children's bread. Healing is for the children. Let me let me let you know why that's so important. One, because there is no more intimate relationship that's more deeply caring than a father in regards to his child. So here, as far as divine healing goes, God will provide. He styled it as something that's essential for the child. A child, amen, receives, amen, the intimacy and the care of a father. My so God, there's amen. two things that the child, the father uh, uh, gives the child. One is yes. supply the need. He deeply cares about. So when you come into God with an affliction of your body, he said, come to me as our father. Our father, people think we're crazy because we trust God. You don't understand. Healing was styled for the children. It was styled. That's what he called it. He said it's the children's bread. It's for the child. So when you come, why? Because a father cares. When a father cares about a child tremendously, a father hurts when the child hurts. A child, a father feels what the child feels. Don't you know if you got a headache, God got one. Don't you know if you got diabetes, God got it. He feels the same way. He cares deeply. That's why when you come to God, may it inspire your faith. He said two things. One, he deeply cares. A father deeply cares. And if you're afflicted, that's the primary need that you have. You can have nice clothes, but if you don't feel good, you're not going to feel good in those clothes. You can have a fancy car, but if you're afflicted, my God, you're going to be afflicted driving that fancy Fancy car. So he knows and I care. And number two, father has responsibility. It's a responsibility there. That's why he said healing is the children's bread. What bread was essential part of the diet and healing is essential to our experience on earth. Why? Because we're still living in a fallen world. Amen. And until our resurrected bodies, thank God we're still going to go through some things. But thank God that God made provision. He will supply all of our need, which includes divine healing. Why? Because he cares. And number two is because it's a responsibility. He said healing is the children's children's bread. It's a responsibility. Not just that I care, but it's a responsibility that I have to my make God, sure I take God, care. Amen. It's not just that I care. Oh, I care about you so much. You don't understand. Why did he say healing is the children's bread? Healing, healing is chill. Why did he style it as that? Why? Because he cares deeply if you got cancer. He cares deeply if you had a heart attack. He cares. He cannot be just separate from you. He's a father. He's a father and he's a good father. He cares. But not just that. It's also his responsibility. He said it's the children's bread. So I care, but also I have the responsibility of a father. When a child comes to me who don't feel good or got this diagnosis or that diagnosis. Or body needs insulin. Or body needs the cholesterol or the blood pressure to come down. Our father cares about us so much. My God. That healing is styled as the children's bread My because Lord. he care and because it's a responsibility. My God. All right. This is as far as we'll be able to go. We're going to have to go into the next service and we're going to just transition to the altar call. But I'm going to give you each of the five for those who just can write these down. Number one of a good father is a protector. Number two, he's a provider. He's a provider. He said, every beast of the force is mine, and I have a cattle up on a thousand hills. Thank the Lord. He's a provider. Number three, a father loves. And we're going to break down what that actually means. Number four, a father is a guider. Some of the best counsel you can ever receive in your life is from a father. And we're going to break that down. And then we're going to close it out with God is trustworthy. Like a father. If you ever say something to your child, make sure you bag it up. If you say you coming, make sure you're there. And we're going to break down how our father is trustworthy. By two immutable things, it's impossible for God to lie. 
he backs up. You said, but Lee, what are those two immutable things? You're going to break it down in the next service? I am. But I'll give it to you right now. Just in just. He said two immutable things. It's impossible for God to lie. What was it? His promise he gave. And then he swore on himself that he would back up the promises he just gave. Two immutable things, it's impossible for God. What? The promises and the oath that he gave to back up the promise. He said the promises was enough. He can't go against his promise. But then he took an oath and you say, who should he take? Who, who does he take an oath out on? He said, because I can find nobody else to make it clear that I'm going to back up my promise. He said, I'm swearing by myself. Everything I said in this book. I'm not what dead be dead. I'm not a dead that's going to say I'll call you on your birthday, but don't do it. I'm not a dead that say I'm going to send you $20 and don't do it. But I'm going to beg up every promise that I ever gave you. You can put your life on it. In fact, I'll put mine. So we're going to break down that God is trustworthy. As we transition, singers may come. We want to sing and offer a prayer. It's Father's Day. Five attributes of a father. But also we spoke earlier and just said, how could you not want to serve a God or have a father like that? I just want to put a pill out. If there's any prodigal daughters or prodigal sons, let's make that decision on Father's Day. Amen. You say, Brother Lee, could you help me explain that? There was a young man who had a good father, but he saw the lights of the world. And said, the lights of the world are too bright. They're too bright. Daddy, I'm going after him. The father had everything the son needed. Everything the child needed. The father said, I got you, man. I can't force you to stay here, but I got you. The son said, Daddy, I saw the lights. He said, I taught you about those lights, son. The son said, Daddy, but the lights are too bright. Daddy, I got to go. And the father, no doubt, was broken. The son said, I'm out. And he went on. And he said, Daddy, before I leave, give me half of what you got. And the dad didn't have to do it because according to the law, after he passed away, and also the, the oldest son had first dibs. But he said, still, even though you disrespected me, you stuck your chest out. And that hurts. When a father, when a son disrespects, it hurts. That's what happened to Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye was dealing with something and the dad felt disrespected. So here the son went out. Messed this life up. The daddy wasn't just some mean father. Every day he was praying, walking the floor and just hoping. Lord, have mercy on my child. Lord, protect my child. Lord, don't let nobody slip nothing in his drink. He think it's partying out there. Lord, don't let nobody slip. Lord, the drunk driving. Lord, he's driving with those friends that's under the influence. Marijuana and pierce your driving just like drinking. Lord, put an angel. Lord, send one of my angels out there with my child this night to just guide that steering wheel. Help him not to slip on that black ice. Lord, help my child. One day, it said that that prodigal son realized that his father was right, that he played the fool, messed his life up. And he said, I'm going back to my father's house. I don't know if he's going to accept me. I don't know if he's going to judge me. I don't know if he's going to tell me. I told you so. You go back out there. Mess your life up. Now you go out there and deal with it. Maybe he'll have mercy. And when he came back to his father, it said when he was a great ways off, you talking about a good father, good father forgives. When he was a great ways off, his father ran to him, kissed him and said, my son that was dead is back home. And one scripture said, there's no greater joy than that my children walk in the truth. I don't think you can give a greater joy to your parents. I don't think of, you can give a greater joy to God than to say, God, I'm a father. But on this Father's Day, I want to come home. 
because my children are made to follow me. They're made to be influenced by me. The things that I do and the things that I say. And I don't want to lead my children. They said it was a man who in a snowstorm, he walked to a bar. And it was deep, deep snow. He put his big boots on and he walked step by step, step by step down the street to the bar. And later on that night, the bar was filled with people. And they said... There's a young child at the door, a young boy's at the door, a young boy's at the door. And everybody turned around, they looked. And the man turned around in this drunken state, and he saw that it was his child. He said, son, what are you doing? He grabbed his belt. Son, what are you doing? You don't come to this place. This is a bad place. This place will mess you up. Son, what are you doing? He said, daddy, daddy. He said, how did you even get here? There's a snowstorm. The snow is deep. How did you even get here? He said, Daddy, Daddy, don't beat me. Daddy, don't beat me, Daddy. He said, tell me, how did you get here? I'm going to deal with it. Who brought you here? Who showed you how to get here? He said, Daddy, don't beat me. Daddy, I went outside and I was looking for you. I missed you. I wanted to see you. And I saw a set of footprints. And I've only seen one. So I said, my daddy left. So it's got to be his. Wherever he's going, it's got to be okay to go. So I walked in your steps. In your steps. And daddy, this is where it led me. If you want to beat me, beat me, daddy. But you let me here. And I thought about it. And that father was able to reconcile with his son and to explain to him how this was not a good place. But I thought about it. The Bible said, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, soon the trump is going to sound. The Bible said this is also the point unto men once to die and after the judgment. In other words, we all got to go that way either by death or by the second coming of Christ, which is soon coming. And I thought about in eternity. How many children are going to end up lost? And they look at their child and say, how did you get down here? How did you get here? Daddy, 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 you showed me how. You showed me. You introduced me to the spirits that got a hold of me that I couldn't shake, that led me all the way to where I'm at today. This Father's Day, our prayer is that you be inspired that we have a great heavenly father, that you see him as an example as we preach to mimic that. But also that some father will say, I may not have a million dollars to give you. I may not be able to get you a car for your birthday or graduation. But one thing I can give you, and that is a praying daddy. I can give you a praying father. You say, but you've been, out, you've been unsaved for years and you've been a bad example, this, that, and the other. But my Bible tells me that he said, I will restore the years that the locust have eaten. I'll restore those years. I'll restore your influence. And now that you led this way, you can lead them the way of God. As we sing a verse of song, shall we stand? If there's anybody that needs prayer, you can come on down. As we sing the song, singers, come up. Help us out. If anybody needs prayer... You come on down. We want to pray with you. If you want prayer, any father want to make a move for God, any mother, child, happy Father's Day. Our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father would love for that child to make his home, his move back home. Is there a father that has the humility to say, I want a new start? Preacher, I've not done everything right. But I heard you say that God is a forgiving God. Will he forgive me? I want to come. I want to be that father. Just come down and stand with us. We want to pray with you. Any fathers, come on down. Some fathers need to say, Lord, forgive me. I haven't been the best. But if you can give me the strength from this day some father may need to grab the hold of a child and say let's go forward let's pray 
pray with your daddy. Pray for your daddy. We said it's tough being a father. We know it. We're not here to judge. It's tough being a father. We, we, we preach that. We proclaim that there's a lot of responsibility. But God is here for you. Anybody else, just make your way down to the altar on Father's Day. Yes, Lord. From home. But now. Of sin. Too long. But Lord. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. We're going to pray for fathers. Anybody else? Just come on down. Father, I'm coming to you for prayer. I need help. Yes, we're in the midst of revival. Souls are being saved. Souls are being sanctified. My God, families are being reconciled. Anybody else need prayer? Father, our Father. Father, I'm coming to you to help me be a better father. Father, I'm coming to you to give me strength to be a better child. My, my, I'm coming back home. Anybody want to come back home? Maybe you need prayer. Maybe you want to come back home. Maybe you need to be strengthened as a father. The altar is open. The altar is open. God is faithful. God is able. God will strengthen you. God will help you. God will forgive you. God will save you. God will enlighten you. God will instruct you. He says, come, come. My, my, I wasted many precious years. I should have been praying with you when you were four or five. When you didn't uh, have the spirits you got now. I should have been, my God, praying with you when you were younger. I've wasted. But now, but now, while I got a couple of years left, while I got a couple of years where I can still uh, influence you, while I'm still alive, I'm coming. Come pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Some people have never seen their father and altar with them praying. You deserve that. Your child deserves that. Grab your child's hand and say, Daddy, tell my son, let's go to the altar. Let's pray. Maybe we need forgiveness. Forgive me, son. I've not been a father. I should have been. Forgive me, daughter. From this day forward, I want to do better. Is there anybody else? My, my. My, my, what a father, our father, yes, open wide, I want to be saved, I want to be delivered, I want help, I want prayer, I want to be a better father, I want to be strengthened, my, my, anybody else just walk your way down to the altar and just say I need prayer preacher, I just need prayer that God would help me. It's tough being a father. We know it's real tough being a father. God is here for us. Anybody else? A revival of fatherhood. My, my. My Lord, real men, real men, praying men. My, my. Preacher, I got a new child. I don't know how to raise that child. I'm coming forth and I can get counsel and prayer that God would help me to raise my new child. I got a young child. Help me, preacher. My, my. My Lord. My Lord. You want to pray? Anybody else? principalities that are against fatherhood we're going to rebuke those in this prayer there's spirits that have been unleashed against fathers we understand it there's laws we're going to bind those spirits we're going to pray that God will give you just a touch from heaven we want to pray for mothers that fathers may not be there that God will grant you a double portion just give us one more verse. My Lord, Lord bless the mothers. Amen. My soul is Grandmothers, we love you. My heart is they say a woman can never replace a man. You're right. But God can give that woman strength to do a lot more than the average woman could do. 
God can give her insight. God can give her wisdom. We're going to pray for grandmothers. Amen. Saints, if we get the fathers in, watch out. Saints, if we get the fathers in, watch out. My, my, my. My, 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 my. My Lord. Just sing that verse, everybody, that chorus one more time. Coming home to fatherhood. Coming home. Everybody sing with us. Coming. Anybody else want to be included? My, my. Lord, help me as a father. Father, we humble our heart before you. Thanking you, dear God, for your goodness. Thanking you on Father's Day. We say happy Father's Day to you, Lord. No better father in the world. Thank you for being our heavenly father. Thank you for helping us, dear God. Thank you for being here for us when nobody was here. Thank you for strengthening us, dear God, when we felt weak. Thank you for guiding us when we didn't know which way to go. Thank you, dear God, for protecting us, dear God, from danger seen and unseen. As the old saints used to pray, Lord, protect us from danger seen and unseen. Father, we thank you for giving angels charge over us. Thank you, dear God, for Lord God, making sure that no weapon, all the weapons that the devil formed to destroy our lives. Father, we, did, we were not spared because we were so smart or because we were so strong. But Lord God, the word said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise up against you in the judgment shall be condemned. Father, we thank you, dear God, for putting a hedge about us and helping us through. Lord, we thank you for being such a provider. Everything that we've needed, dear God, you've been right there for us. Father, we didn't get into it in this service, Lord but God, but oh, in the Hebrews 11 chapter, it speaks about all the things that God provided, how God protected and strengthened, brought down Jericho, opened up seas, shut lion's mouth, and then at the end it said uh, they uh, had cruel mockings and, and trials and were uh, sown asunder. And I read that and I said, Lord, in the first part of 11, you said you delivered us and protected us in all these situations. But at the end of the book, it said that we went through things and we were cut and we were asunder. But well, uh, well, well, that don't make sense. But Lord, you revealed to us, amen, some things you protect us from, but my God, some things you give us grace to face. And even in the midst of it, my God, we might not get our license back, but our rent was always paid. We might not get our job back, but Lord, we never went hungry. Thank you, dear God, for how your grace, our Father will either protect us from anything, my God, or if we do go through it, you will go through through it with us oh what a father your grace is sufficient lord we pray dear god for the fathers that came forward not as a cliche but lord with all the sincerity that we possess we pray you will help every father to be a better father from this day forward father we pray you forgive us anywhere where we fell short as a father maybe we didn't spend enough time maybe we weren't there on birthdays maybe dear god we uh, uh, uh didn't do what we said we were gonna do but lord just we pray that the children will have forgiveness in their hearts and we pray that you will have forgiveness on your heart so that the father will leave feeling my God a load being lifted and that they will do better from this day forward Lord rebuke the devil he would love to discourage and overwhelm but Lord we just pray that you give the fathers dear God courage that you give the father strength Lord God and Lord those that aren't saved we just pray you give them the humility how could you not want to serve a God a father like that how could you not want to be a God fearing child a father to your children Lord, bless the fathers. Give them the humility and the strength to let go and let God. Many have tried that road of sin many years, but it's time, if nothing else, for God and for their children. We love you from the depths of our heart. We appreciate you. Happy Father's Day. In Jesus' name, amen. You may return to your seat. We have brief announcements and they have something for the fathers.